Hi everyone, and welcome to the first in a series of videos covering Puppet metrics. I'm Adrian, a support engineer here at Puppet, and I'll be going over a few topics related to these metrics, including what exactly is a Puppet metric, how can we collect and display them, and how can we make use of them. With that, let's get started by defining and showing an example of one of these metrics. So here we are on the trusty command line of my Puppet server. And in practical terms, the metrics are the values returned by the status API of our services. And the example I'll be using here is for a Puppet server. So I can ask it to give me its current metrics like so, just using curl. And that gave us quite a bit of information, so why don't we narrow that down to just one specific metric. And I'll just be using JQ to pick one out and display it. And there we go. We have a real-time example of what comprises a Puppet metric a measurement with the name of average requested JRubies and a value of zero. Uh, we will cover this specific metric in more detail when we talk about interpreting and making use of them, uh, but for now there's one other aspect to the measurement that we need to take note of, and that is time. Uh, the time at which we take the measurement is key to making everything work, and adding collection time to this measurement gives us what's called time series data. So why don't we talk about what that is for a second. To talk about time series data, I have an article from Influx Data on the subject open here, which is linked in the description. It includes an introduction by Paul Dix, the founder of Influx Data, and the definitions here are a good overview of the topic. So what is a time series graph? Time series graphs are created by plotting an aggregated value, either a counter statistic such as sum or average, on a timeline. Time intervals based on the time range in the data being plotted are used to aggregate the values. What are time plot statistics? A time series plot is a graph in which the x-axis represents some measure of time. In fact, the x-axis is labeled as the time axis. The y-axis represents the variable being measured. Data points are displayed and connected with straight lines in most cases, allowing for interpretation of the resulting graph. So with all that said, let's look at an example to put all of this together. For this example, I decided to go with something other than average requested JRubies, because on this box the value is always zero, which isn't very interesting to look at. But the idea is the same. We have a few time series plots where the x-axis is time and the y-axis is an aggregated value. Uh, in this example, we have three plots, heap committed, heap used, and uptime. Heap committed is the green line and represents how much memory is allocated to the heap, and you can see that it remains constant for the period of time that we're looking at. The yellow plot is the amount of heap used, and we can see that it goes up and down as the JVM uses and frees up memory. Finally, the blue line is the uptime of Puppet Server, and this is an example where we have multiple y-axes. So the heap measurements use the one on the left, as they are measured in bytes, and uptime uses the one on the right, as it's measured in milliseconds. A final note that the thing I mentioned about aggregation is very important, because all these plots need to use an aggregated value in order to align the metrics at regular intervals so that we can pair it to other measurements as we've done in this graph. There will be more details about that in the video on how to interpret these metrics, but this is the power of visualizing all of these values. It makes it a lot easier for us humans to see the data and compare the plots against each other as opposed to just looking at the raw output like we did earlier. That brings us to the conclusion of this first video, and I'll see you in the next one when we cover how to collect and display this data. Thank you.